Right, I'm back after a couple of weeks away um, in the wilderness of northern Scotland, the northern highlands with my family away from the internet and you lot. Um, but I'm back so we better crack on with another video, right? This week, do you remember, I think, I remember talking about the mediastinum, right? And um, we talked about the angle of Louis and how the mediastinum is split into superior and inferior by the transverse thoracic plane. That's useful. This surface anatomy landmark and the stuff that happens on that plane, very useful if you understand what's going on there. So that's what we're gonna look at today. And there's also a little bit of story time. And story time this week is gonna be about the guillotine. I think I mentioned the guillotine when I talked about the mediastinum, right? The guillotine, how is this associated? Well, Dr. Guillotine did not, or Guillotin, did not actually invent the guillotine. Um, Dr. Louis did. Dr. Louis? Um, in the, right, the late 1700s, um, France was changing and one of its egalitarian notions was that the nobleman, that uh, who, uh, if the nobleman was sentenced to death he would have his head cut off by a sword, um, but your peasant would just be hung by a rope. And that didn't seem very egalitarian to many of the, many of the egalitarians. They wanted everybody who had been sentenced to death to be put to death equally. Now, what Dr. Guillotin did, he was kind of, there's always a committee, right? He was like spearheading the committee. He was spearheading the movement to propose that if somebody is to be put to death, it should be done in a humane way, right? Dr. Louis, and this was uh, Antoine Louis, was the bloke that actually invented the guillotine. You know the guillotine, right? Big wooden structure with a metal blade that's slanting, super sharp, it's got a weight on it, you put a thing, shtunk, head is separated from body at the neck. Um, and it was originally called the Louisette or the Louison because Dr. Louis invented it. I think another fella made it, was it a German fella? Um, but it then became called the guillotin or the guillotine because Dr. Guillotin, the Parisian physician, was such a proponent of this method of execution. He th I think he spent the rest of his life trying to dissociate his name from this instrument of death, which, is, yeah, which you can understand as a doctor, right? We've got the builders in again, the builders are always in. Um, I think his family continued to try and separate their name from it as well after his death. Um, but Dr. Louis then, so now Dr. Louis was a surgeon and a uh, physiologist of the time. Isn't it interesting how the guillotine, a thing that makes a nice transverse section through the neck, might be associated with this transverse thoracic plane through the thorax. Guillotine is it's quite... And the thing is, this angle of Louis here, is it named after or for Dr. Antoine Louis? Um, many people have assumed so for a long time, but it's not entirely clear. There's also, um, was it Pierre Alexandre Louis, um, who it also may, may be named after. <laughs> so while this gets called the angle of Louis, nobody's entirely sure which Louis it's named for. This is one of the reasons why we're moving towards uh, contemporary naming. This is also called the sternal angle. Oh, that's a lot more sensible. You can remember the names of the sensible stuff. The problem is, of course, is that many um, of your healthcare colleagues may refer to it as the angle of Louis. So you've got to know both. Now, it's a useful landmark because here we've got the uh, jugular notch. That's the, the top of the manubrium. This is the manubrium here. And this is the sternum and this is the ziffy sternum down here. And then you can, if you start here and you move down, you can feel. This, this prominence varies in people, but there is a, a prominent lump here. You can find this in pretty much all people. Now this is a useful anatomical landmark, partly because you've now found the second rib. Here's the first rib, here's the second rib at the sternal angle, but also because this is the level of the transverse thoracic plane. And the transverse thoracic plane then, 
is a transverse plane across the thorax running from the level of the sternal angle to the level of the intervertebral disc between um, vertebrae T4 and T5. And that, as I said before, separates the superior mediastinum from the inferior mediastinum. Go see that video if you haven't seen it. But also a lot of things happen on that plane. If we look at some models now and have a look at what structures we find there and what they're doing on that plane, then we can look at a transverse radiograph, a CT image or an MR image, and you can work out what all these tubes are and all these things that don't look like tubes but are tubes and are running in all sorts of different directions. It's, it looks quite complicated if you look at a transverse CT image at this level, but if you can get all this inside your head, you can work it out. Right, let's do this. Okay. Okay, then. So here we go, there's the, um, our sternal angle here, there's the manubrium, there's the sternum. Now if we take this off, obviously there are lots of things on this plane, lots of obvious things like lungs and vertebrae and various arteries and bits and bobs. It's the big structures we're most interested in, right? So if I take this off, what do we see? Well, we're about here, right? Is that right? Boom. So we're about, about here. This is exactly how I teach this, by the way. I, I, I break the students up into groups, give them torso models and say, take it apart, make a big list of everything you find and we'll compare. Um, so what we see is that it's, the, the sternal angle is just superior to the heart. It's where the great vessels are coming out of the heart. So we can see over here, we've got the superior vena cava and we've got the aorta, but not just the aorta. At this level, this is the start and the end of the arch of the aorta. So on the transverse thoracic plane, the aortic arch starts and ends. And in some people, you might have that, that, that internal curvature of the aortic arch at that level. So that's here. Now look, we've also got this. So here's the aorta, that's the superior vena cava, which means that this is the pulmonary trunk. And look, just at this level, we've not just got the pulmonary trunk, so it's not just going up like that, but it's, it's folded over. Look, it's, it's curving posteriorly. So what, what's that going to look like if you were to cut a, um, a section through here? It's going to kind of look like a, a long thing, right? Not just a round thing. So this is the, the pulmonary trunk and pretty much on the transverse thoracic plane, the pulmonary trunk then splits into uh, left and right pulmonary arteries going to, to either lung. And if I take this off, look, we've also got in here, look, can you see what's happening there? At this same level then, we've got the trachea ending. And the trachea then is bifurcating, it's, it's splitting. This is the carina. The trachea is split, splitting into the two main bronchi. So we've got that as well happening here. If we go posteriorly to that, then we find the esophagus not really doing anything interesting, just carrying on down. It's got a vagus nerve on either side. Um, hmm, there's a hint of a blood vessel there, right? but it's not complete on this model. So this is also the practical where students realize that these models are not all the same. And you study these models and you find different things. Um, like this guy's major arteries up here. And maybe not as you would expect. Um, what can I see if I take this off? Ah, that's another one there, look, see. At this level then, we've got the ligamentum arteriosum. What was the ductus arteriosus? That's also on the transverse thoracic plane. Almost forgot that, that's cool. But you see this, this you get an idea of this, this curving shape here, right? These are all the things that we're cutting through on the transverse thoracic plane. So remember over the right side, superior vena cava, then aorta, but we see the aorta twice because it's curving around. Uh, so we have the ascending aorta and the descending aorta, pulmonary trunk splits into two. Um, and then, uh, look, this, I'll take the esophagus off. Uh, this one, there you see a bit more of it there. Now what's this? And also if we turn around, uh, this one's a bit high, but what we've got here is, these are the azygos veins, right? So we've got the, the azygos veins in the posterior thoracic wall here, we've got the hemiazygos on the other side. The azygos vein is looping over here because it loops over the, it's a long way over here, but it loops over the right pulmonary artery 
to get back into the superior vena cava. Right? So that's also happening on this plane. This, this model shows it a bit high, but roughly around here, the azygos vein is, is passing into the superior vena cava. The cardiac plexus is around here. The thoracic duct is on the posterior thoracic wall, and that's coming up and moving over to the, uh, to the left from the right side at this point as well. Um, but that, that's most of it. It's these, it's these big structures we're most interested in. Now, if you, um, if you like mnemonics, mnemonics don't work for me. I can't remember the mnemonic in the first place, let alone what all the letters mean. If you like mnemonics, do a Google, you'll find a bunch for these. But that's the transverse thoracic plane. Now, given what we've just looked at, how is this going to work if we look at a section? Right then, what have we got here? Well, remember that whenever you're looking at a, a radiograph um, and it's a transverse section through the body that the feet are coming, you know, see it? This is anterior, this is posterior. The head is behind the screen, the feet are coming out of the screen, right? Can't get my feet up that high. So what can we see here? So this then is the left side, this is the right side. Uh, the black space, well that's air, so these are lungs. We can see two more black spaces here, I wonder what those are. Um, so here, there's the sternum. This is roughly at the level of the transthoracic plane. So these are all the structures we were looking at. You see what I mean about lots of tubes, black tubes, white tubes. These are tubes, but they don't look like tubes. They're not tubes you've cut through, yeah. Um, we've got the scapula out here. These are ribs. There's the vertebra. Um, okay, so, well, where do we start? Okay, so here's the, this is where we are. If this is the left side and this is the right side, like this, right, but kind of like, like that, then over on the right side here, we see a white circle, a white tube, and another white tube. So over on the rightmost side, if we're cutting through here, this is this, this is the superior vena cava. And this very big tube here, this massive blood vessel must be the aorta, but that's not good enough because we see the aorta twice on this image. So this is the ascending aorta. So that's becoming the aortic arch. And then this here, oi, one, basically one, two, three. This doesn't really look like a tube, does it? But this is anterior, this is the third tube here. It's the pulmonary trunk. And because it's you can see the angle it's going out there. It's not going straight up, it's going posteriorly. So there's the pulmonary trunk. And look, there's it's, it's splitting into the two pulmonary arteries, the left and the right. And then, posteriorly, we have the, we have the, the airways sitting posterior to this, right? So posterior to where all that's happening, we've got the trachea bifurcating into the two main bronchi at the carina. So these two black spaces, these are air-filled spaces. So these are the left and right main bronchi. And look, they've, they're only just separating. They're just, they're kind of right here, right? So this one, in fact, isn't just a round tube. It's got a bit of a shape going that way. It's going into the black of the lungs. So that means then that the the aorta, we have the ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and it loops around posteriorly and becomes the descending aorta. That means that this here, this very posterior, look, it's right next to the vertebrae and it's on the left side, that's the descending aorta, or the thoracic descending aorta. How's that? And that's the trick. You should be able to recognize all of these structures on this section because you know the angle of Louis, the sternal angle, you know the transverse thoracic plane, and you know all the structures that are here, you just gotta work it all out in your head, right? So look, that's the, um, that's the aorta there. Here it is again on the left side, right next to the vertebrae. So can you confidently recognize all of those structures now? I hope so. And if you go a little bit more inferiorly, then you start to see the structures of the heart. And if you go a little bit more superiorly, then you start to see all of these structures up here. And that's it.
it's not easy to do on um, a 2D video either. It's one of those things, again, you need to get into the lab and look at these 3D structures in the real world to be able to work all that out. But that is the importance of the angle of Louis or the sternal angle. And that's the importance of the transverse thoracic plane. And there are a lot of very important structures there that you, need, you must be able to recognize um, on radiographs. All right, sounds like the builders have packed up and gone home. Maybe I should have just started recording this a bit later, eh? Ah well, right, guillotine. <laughs>